Yossi, thanks very, very much. Okay. Uh, next, we have a very special um, part of the program. We're uh, f um, fortunate um, to have two, two senior and, and uh, um, very special people who will be speaking with each other. Um, first is Professor Yitzhak Ben Yisrael, who we were delighted agreed to, to speak with us today. Um, Professor Ben Yisrael probably doesn't need any introduction. Uh, I'm sure most of you... Know, know who he is and have, have uh, heard him speak elsewhere. Um, he's the head of the Security Studies Program and the Deputy Director of the um, Hartog School and uh, of Government and Policy and head of the Interdisciplinary Cyber Studies Center, the ICRC, head of the Yuval Neman Workshop for Science, Technology and Security, all of these at uh, Tel Aviv University. Um, he uh, also serves as the chairman of the Israeli Space Agency, chairman of the National Council for R&D of the Ministry of Science, and he's the former head of military R&D of the IDF and the Ministry of Defense. Um, uh, Professor Ben Israel um, also held several posts in operations, intelligence and weapons development units in the, in the Israel Air Force. Uh, he's been a member of Knesset, um, and uh, let me welcome and thank you for very much for joining us. Uh, Sudan, uh, let me. Oh, uh, wait, let me uh, also thank Ron Benny Shai, uh, from. <laughs> from <laughs> that makes my job much easier. Anyway, even though it may be irrelevant, um, uh, for those few people who don't know Ron, uh, he's a commentator on defense and national security issues. He told me outside for about that he's been doing this for 40 years. Uh, a variety of Israeli media that um, you can, uh, I won't even go through. He's a winner of a number of major journalistic awards, and he's himself a retired colonel of the um, IDF. Um, with that, let me, let me let you guys get started. One thing is we didn't have a chance between sessions to clear the water glasses, so let me, while you're talking, do that for you, and uh, please go ahead. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, thank you very much, Gideon, for the kind presentation. Um, uh, let's get started. Professor Ben Israel is uh, dealing for many decades. Are you, by the way, retired or reserved major general? Retired, but in Israel, you know, <laughs> you never generals retired. never retire. Yeah, old soldiers never die. They only fade away. So, um, Professor Ben Israel, you have dealt extensively in your uh, career with terrorism and technology. What do you think are going to be the uh, major terror threats that we are going to face in the next decade, so to say? I don't know what will be the major, we may speak perhaps about new ones. But the, the problem with terrorism is that new ones are not really replacing old ones. I mean, we, have, we had this morning an incident of a terrorist using a knife. Which, stabbing. Yeah. Stabbing, which is a very old weapon, still very effective. And, and uh, in warfare generally, even in classical warfare between armies, not only with terrorism, usually whenever you invent a new weapon or a new method uh, of doing something, it doesn't really uh, push out the old ones. It joins the, uh, to the others. And if we speak about new ones, then I think the most serious one will be the, everything which we call the cyber sweat. Now, cyber is a very um, ill-defined term uh, because, um, because it, different people mean 
mean different things when they say cyber security. But the, really what is the most um, influential technology in the last 50 years or so, and it's going to be only more than this in the next 50 years, is, is the technology of computers. And everything becomes computerized. Each one of us is carrying a computer in its pocket. Uh, we call it sometimes smartphones. We call it with different names. But in this room, there are at least, uh, I think, at least 10 or so controllers. We don't call them computers, but controllers that control the air condition, the electricity, etc. And the uh, screening, etc. Everything is computerized, and we are going to live in an environment in which we uh, uh, we have something we call it today Internet of Things. I mean, every device it, at your house will be will have some computer chip running it, and all of them will be interconnected. That that will make our life uh, very effective, perhaps very easy, comfortable. But it creates a huge uh, weak point. If you are a bad guy, you can uh, use or abuse this uh, connectivity and computerization in order to to um, create an, sometimes an enormous damage. The, the uh, <coughs> computerized terror, so to say, the cyber terror, is usually something that is being used or or can be used only by by states by countries that have a lot of money in order to produce the the mechanism the aggressive mechanisms that can attack uh, in a terror way like north korea against sony for instance but i'm asking since we are dealing mainly with islam islamist Terrorism, which usually opts to the to the most primitive forms of terrorism, do you think that they are also going to use cyber? For instance, the the way Daesh, the the way ISIS uses the the, the internet, the YouTube. Do you call it cyber terrorism? Of course, of course they use. I mean, technology becomes more and more simple, and anyone can use it. Anyone can use it, and you don't have to be a, a member of the uh, interdisciplinary cyber research center at Tel Aviv University in order to develop malware, that is, malignant uh, uh, software. And and the and the example of of uh, ISIS using uh, the YouTube as a kind of weapon. I mean, very effective one, by the way much more effective than the whole uh, uh, warriors that, that they have. It's, it's only an example. Uh, and, and, and even the most primitive country in the world has enough people which are educated enough to, to write some scripts and malwares. You don't need a, uh, a university degree for this. Do you see a combination of cyber terrorism and the um, biological, chemical, nuclear terrorism? Bi bio biological and nuclear uh, weapons are very much, are very difficult to produce. People speak about it, it's not so simple. And, and you know, even countries, if for, for rich countries, it's not so simple to uh, control the technology which one needs in order to develop a, a nuclear or biological weapon. Chemical weapons are simpler, but if you speak about these two, it's not so simple, and it's also not so simple for small, ter relatively small terrorist organizations uh, to have them. They may buy a weapon from someone. This is a, a different story. But uh, um, uh, cyber weapons may be different. Now, we usually think about cyber terrorism as a, a, in terms of a primitive attack, like um, uh, uh, de uh, denial of service of, of certain sites or, or defacing our uh, sites and things like this. And the, but this is a mistake. I mean, everything is run by computers. For example, our 
trains are run by computers, they have a driver. I mean, a man which we call a driver, and he has a lot of functions in life, but driving is not one of them. And, and the, really, the train is run by, by a computer, and, and the software is designed to avoid crashes between trains. But if someone will enter, penetrate into the, the main computer of the, of the railway uh, company, then uh, uh, someone may change this software and instead of avoiding crashes, make accident. And then you'll have a, a, a cyber attack which may cost you hundreds of people dead in life. And this is a very serious, serious problem. We all... We all uh, were, uh, we, we, we don't know yet where did this Malaysian uh, aircraft uh, disappear. Yeah. But what is interested, interesting here is that the last signal from, the, from this disappearing um, uh, aircraft came from uh, the engines, which transmitted something to the uh, um, Rolls Royce Maintenance Center in the area. That, uh, it, of course, for uh, uh, um, easing the, for making the maintenance more easy and, and reporting about the, the engine and things like this. But someone can reverse it and use the same link in order to tell the engines to do something. For example, shut off or things like this. And, and again, you will have events like this. And it's, it's a mistake to think about cyber attack in terms of, uh, um, information lost, something like this. It's not only this. Uh, it may be life cost and, and things like this. And of course, if I'll ask you what can you do against it, you say defense in cyber. But but is there? Can you really defend yourself from the the millions of options that are available? As you 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 gave a. Great example: the, the, the stopping the engine of a of a plane from the maintenance center of the area. It's it's like it's like anything else. I mean, if you look for a foolproof uh, uh, defense, there's nothing like this in any field. But you have to remember that terrorist organizations usually don't have enough uh, patience to spend too much time on, on one attack or something like this. It's very rare. They, will, they don't have enough resources, they don't have enough people, so they would like to do something which they can prepare relatively fast and earn a lot of uh, media and, and, and noise, making a lot of noise in the world uh, because this is, this is the, the whole idea behind terrorist Terrorism, acts. Yeah. Uh, and, and therefore, if it will be too difficult, it may not be too difficult for the U.S., uh, NSA, or, or the, the, um, uh, the Russians to penetrate into computer. It, it may be too difficult to terror organizations, not in terms of technology needed, but in terms of time and effort needed in order, at the end of the day, to, to achieve something which someone with a knife can, can achieve. I mean, those... Uh, media media references and 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 therefore if you protect to a set i mean if you if you don't really demand full protection full proof protection you demand that it will be only to a certain uh level then you may keep all of them or most of them at least out of the picture like by the way the same the same way we treat a crime Crime is an old phenomenon, and no one of us is really demanding from the police and, and uh, Ministry of uh, Internal Security, etc., that crime rate will be zero. It's, it's not possible. But we still demand that crime rate will be below a certain threshold that will make our life bearable, okay? that we will, we will, we will be able to continue living in such a way. The same... same uh, mindset should be applied also to to uh, terrorism generally and to cyber terrorism in particular cyber terrorism is a is a fascinating subject but 
it seems that in the next decade we sh we are going to face the ma the majority of terror acts are going to be the the primitive the old forms of uh, terrorism maybe more brutal maybe more uh, uh, extensive in 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 the spread of the in the dissemination of the problem what do you think can be done using technology in order to minimize this form of terrorism, the old form, the, the traditional terrorism? The traditional terrorism, uh, uh, you, you mean in, in outside the cyber realm? Yes. Yes, I, I, I left the cyber subject because first I don't yeah. really understand it and secondly, it depends. I mean, it depends on the threshold that we uh, uh, um, demand or, or require, because I mean, the, the, there's no really effective way to stop a man with a knife uh, going on in a bus and then start the stabbing people. I mean, there, there's no effective way to stop things like this. Of course, you can reduce the number by by uh, acting against uh, suspicious uh, elements, etc. But you cannot really you cannot really uh, stop it. You can use. Please allow me to stop if you. It's in, in, in a little bit. If it's yeah. a little bit more um, uh, effective than uh, uh, than uh, stabbing, like using explosive belts and things like that, then. You can, and we did it here in Israel, you can use a lot of technologies uh, to help you. Uh, because knives, is, knives, you know, is something that every, every, everyone can carry. I mean, you don't want to uh, forbid people carrying knives in the streets. I'm not speaking about going on an airplane or something like this. But I'm explosive speaking events, about it's a, carrying it's, a knife. And it seems especially the lesson learned from the events in Jerusalem, the recent event in Jerusalem, is that massive presence of security forces, uh, uh, overt security uh, forces, not uh, clandestine, in the streets minimizes the, the effectivity of the terror and the, the, um, the reoccurrence of, the, of these stabbing uh, cases or, or shooting with, with a handgun or, or something like this, which means presen a massive presence. Can technology replace this massive presence of human beings as, uh, in, in uniform? As, as I started to say, it depends on the technology used by the, by the terrorist. If they use simple things, we don't want to live in in a society in which we wouldn't, wouldn't be able to to uh, carry knife in our pockets or, or in our uh, things like this. But if it's explosives or like like the suicide bombers that we had here in 2000, 2003, then then you, of course you can use and and we did it. I mean, by the one of the uh, um, we, we, we still don't talk too much about the way the so-called Second Intifada was... Um, uh, well, quashed. At the end of the day, stopped, okay? But, but uh, uh, a lot of technology was involved there, a lot of technology. Of course, uh, when I say technology, it means also intelligence technology. Because uh, uh, there are technologies which we usually don't don't immediately connect to counter-terrorist technology, but if I have uh, intelligence technology that will enable me to detect that something is going to happen before it happens, this is better than waiting for the terrorists in our streets uh, with with this policeman or. And 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 uh, we did it. I mean, this uh, uh, the second intifada really was stopped by counterforce, which you, which was based on a lot of technology. Uh, for instance, a biometric technology. We know that a many that, that the most effective me method of screening out security. Uh, uh, risks 
human security risks in airports, for instance, based on questioning, I'm questioning you, I, I see your body language, I see your eyes movement, you start sweating, and I start to suspect, or I suspect. Is there a way to do it with biometric means, and even unmanned biometric means? You, you put, say, I'm... I'm letting my imagination go, and putting such a, a biometric device in a, in, a, in a bus station or a train station. Is it possible? I guess it is. The question is, do, do we want to live like this? I mean, this is the main question. At the end of the day, I mean, it, it, we speak about terrorism as if it has no roots. I mean, bad guys would like to explode themselves and kill some, some of us too. This is not the case. I mean, they ha there is a root here. I mean, we speak about, in, in, in those years, in these years, we speak about terrorism, which is really uh, uh, motivated by some clash between uh, people who don't like, between them and, and, and Western culture. They don't like Western culture, okay? When we like Western culture, one of the reasons we like Western culture is because we have freedom, <laughs> relative freedom, way. of movement, of uh, expression, privacy, and yeah. everything, privacy. And it, we don't want the, to, to change this in order to fight uh, terrorism. This will be uh, the victory of their idea. And, and this, this is the main, the, the main problem, usually, is how to balance between... Uh, whatever we can do, and we can do a lot in order to uh, make us more secure in terrorism as well as in other areas, how to balance between this and all the Western French Revolution uh, values that, that we would like to not to, to live, we would like to stick to. Okay. A question mark, what is your answer? Uh, I, I, I will prefer, at the end of the day, I will prefer the, the way of life we would like to, to live and pay knowing that, that crime. And I know that I pay in crime, you know, every TV show, you, you always meet the case in which people are angry at the police or the, or the um, uh, um, uh, general... Uh, a prosecution. But, uh, 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 be, Bernie. At, uh, yeah, the general attorney, because it's clear that he is uh, a villain, this guy, but there are legal problems and Springs, we cannot yes. really uh, 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 prove it to the jury. Or, or, and we don't change it. We don't change it because we want to live in a society that keeps these values. And I think that at the end of the day, this will be also the case with, otherwise we will not win this war. And the war is not really won by preventing the terrorists from, from killing uh, our citizens. It, it's a deeper, it sh you should be treated in a deeper level. So therefore, at the end of the day, I think, uh, the way I see it, I see that uh, if we will be uh, stubborn enough, um, um, we will win this war. I mean, I'm speaking now about the, the general war, okay? And uh, because there are not a lot of people living in, in this third world or Muslim world which really uh, support this terrorism. It's, it's an action made by a very small group of uh, people, and at the end of the day, I think they will not survive like, like uh, piratism, 200 years ago, or things like this. What are the most promising technology in combating terror in general do you see today? It's, uh, there's no one technology. It's, it's a I'm talking basket. technologies. And as I said, almost anything that we can think about in modern time is something which is really... A, 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 a application, certain application of a computer. 
So we speak about video recognition, we speak about biometric uh, identification, we speak about uh, anything. It's really all sorts of tricks we play with, with computers. Now, if you speak about new areas, there is something that we call big data analysis, okay? Uh, uh, because everything is connected and everything, uh, a lot of information, a lot of bits are running all over the world. There is no, until now, there was no effective way to collect, to collect all the bits and, and make, make any possible. use of them, okay? Yeah. Uh, it, uh, it's changing. It's changing because of uh, the technology of what we call big data analysis is developing very fast, and it's possible by machines. I'm not speaking about because we will not never we will never have people to read everything and to understand. But machines can uh, many times predict what is going to happen by following these bits in the network. Uh, or at least indicating to some human being that this is the conclusion that one should draw from the data. Uh, and, and we call it, um, uh, um, as I said, big data analysis. Now, there is a danger here that it will enable governments to control better their citizens. I mean, I can use the same technology in order to, to analyze who is going to vote for me and who is so going to vote against elements, me. Yes. So we have, again, we have to put some firewalls between the application of this technology and, 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 users. and the users in order to prevent misuse of it. IEDs seem to be the most uh, difficult problem that uh, the US forces encountered both in Iraq and in Afghanistan. Is there a good technology or a good solution to detecting IEDs? IEDs, the, it is explosive charges side of the road, uh, both on human being, carried by human beings, or on, on the roadside. Yeah, uh, relative to the problems that we mentioned before, this is a relatively easy problem to solve. So why is it is not being solved yet? It, it, it is solved. It's not true that it is not solved. It's everything that something new is coming. I mean, you are the U.S. Army. You didn't prepare yourself for for some kind of guerrilla warfare. You prepared yourself to 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 fight with the Warsaw Pact uh, the armored divisions. Okay. Suddenly, you find yourself in a situation in which the real threats are guerrilla uh, techniques. It takes you time to to adopt and to develop the new um, and 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 the people who said here before uh, are doing exactly this and it, 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 it there's no real uh, uh, obstacle to solve uh, ID ideas problem. because they have explosives they have some electronics which controls them they have some communica communication. Uh, uh, um, that to, to activate the devices and things like this. And all of this can be detected and prevented and stopped and jammed and all the other technologies that, that we used in the past, by the way. Uh, uh, it doesn't say that tomorrow no, uh, any IED operated by someone will find the right technology that should take care of it in the right place at the right time and something like this. But in principle, it, it is a much simpler problem. Okay, I will ask you the last question. Uh, Gideon, how much time do we have? The last question is <laughs> Okay. Um, it seems that Israel, it, it's a question that is being asked in every form uh, like this, but I have to ask it. Why is it you think that Israel generates so many startups and initiatives uh, in high tech, not only in homeland security, but also but in, in high tech in general. I, I heard all the explanations, but, but none of them is really sufficient to, to explain it. Well, it's, uh, 
I, I'm not clear. He tricked enough. you. He said one question, but this question will take one hour to. But but let me try to say a few sentences about it. Okay. Uh, at the end of the day, I think it's a matter of culture. And it is and and it is culture which is really uh, some improvement and perfection in a way of a Jewish culture overall. Even though most of us, me especially, are not religious at all. Okay, still it is a culture of criticism. Of uh, you, you take you take the 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 forefathers of the Jewish. Uh, religion, Moses and David and all the, the heroes, all of them had sins. I mean, they were not perfect. It's not Muhammad or Jesus. They were not perfect. All, all of them had sinned and were punished by, by uh, God. Higher authority. Higher authority. And it is something, if you take the, the Talmud, the, the Gemara, the, the culture of criticizing and asking questions and not accepting authority is something which is very deep in our roots. Even though I'm not religious, this is the way my mother educated me. Okay, I came back from, I think I was in, still in kindergarten, and I told her that uh, we, it was uh, Passover, Pesach, and I told her that we learned that uh, Moses uh, appointed I- Aaron, to be the Kohen uh, Gadol, the chief priest, and she asked me why. I said, because he knew how to talk. Uh, Moses was, uh, she said, I'm, are you sure that it is, was not because he was his brother? <laughs> I was five years old. This is something we, we, we learn when we are very young. At the end of the day, we become very non-disciplined. I mean, if you tour around the world, there are no, no, no one which can compete, compete uh, our kids being uh, non, not disciplined. Non, and, 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 and therefore, we have a kind of culture which encourages uh, creativity. And at, at, at Startup Nation and all these terms are, at the end of the day, an expression of the creativity. I mean, the, the ecosystem, the culture, uh, um, uh, we, uh, you fail. You don't, in Israel, you don't pay too much. You may go to higher level even. <laughs> there are also bad, bad uh, aspects of it, of course. But we don't pay too much for failure. And this is very important for innovation and technology and things like this. And uh, so it, it's a kind of uh, a package deal, you know. It's, some things are good, some things are bad, but this is, I think, the, the reason. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm sure there are some downsides to the, to the culture that you, you describe, but I take your word that it is, a, at the end, at the bottom line, it is an advantage. And thank you very much for your insights, and uh, thank you for listening. Thank you. Thanks very much to uh, Professor Ben Israel and Ron Ben Ishai. Um, before we break for lunch, maybe a, a couple of notes about um, uh, the afternoon part of the program leading up to the. Uh, um, award, the award presentation. Um, right after lunch, we have Professor Boaz Ganor talking about some of the trends in terrorism. Uh, then we have a very interesting presentation by um, Brigadier General Shmuel Zakai, who manages um, Ben Gurion Airport, who's going to be talking about how they managed to keep the airport operating as they did during the time of. Um, Operation Protective Edge, with all the threats that were associated with with that. Um, after that, uh, former uh, head of the Israel Security Agency and Minister of Science, Technology, and former Minister of Science, Technology, and Space, Yaakov Perry will be joining for a short um, overview, leading to the finalist, uh, the the winner 
presentation, uh, announcement and presentation by um, Ambassador uh, Dan Shapiro, U.S. Ambassador Dan Shapiro. Um, after that, there'll be a reception, uh, wine and cheese, where you can spend some time talking to the U.S., uh, the Defense Department folks, uh, especially who are now out of the picture uh, interviewing and grilling the, the startups. Um, I notice one thing that seems like a law in Israel is that after lunch, everybody leaves the conferences. I hope that you'll break the law in this case and stay with us for the afternoon session because, um, firstly, it's obviously it's a great program, and secondly, we'd, we'd very much like everybody to be here when the startup uh, winner is announced and the ambassador comes to give him the uh, $100,000 prize. Thanks, and with that, um, let's go out and eat. <laughs>